In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Norm died with Christ, and rose with him to new life, making now shared with him eternal glory. My brothers and sisters, we have come together to renew our trust in Christ, who, by dying on the cross, has freed us from eternal death, and by rising has opened for us the gates of heaven. Let us pray for Norm, that he may share in Christ's victory, and let us pray for ourselves, that the Lord may grant us the gift of his loving consolation. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son, who died on the cross, was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant Norm, who has gone to his rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the <coughs> Corinthians. We know that if our earthly dwelling, yet tent should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. So we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. For Norm, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brother Norm, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brother Norm, who proclaimed the good news of Jesus Christ, and serve the needs of the poor, that he may be welcomed into the sanctuary of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. For the family and friends of our brother Norm, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, we pray to the Lord. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. 
Now let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Norm. May our family express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again, when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. In your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Norm in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Norm in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother now forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother Norm to his place of rest. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Our brother Norm has gone to his rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome him to the table of God's children in heaven. With faith and hope in eternal life, let us assist him with our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord also for ourselves. May we who mourn be reunited one day with our brother Norm. Together, may we meet Christ Jesus when he who is our life appears in glory. We read in sacred scripture, Jesus said to the crowd, Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me, because I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but that I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him on the last day. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. On behalf of Father Tim Fredrickson, Father Tim Pick, St. Elizabeth Seaton Parish Community, and myself, I extend our sincere sympathy to Norm's beloved wife, Jane, his son, Scott, his daughter, Jody, and her husband, Bart, three grandsons, Alex, Nix, and Ben, three great-grandchildren, Nora, Arton, and Jolene, three sisters, Judy, Rose, and Linda, Brothers Larry and Tom, sister in law Lawan, and many nieces and nephews and friends. May you be comforted and strengthened by your Lord Himself. We are never prepared for the death of a loved one. No matter the circumstances of loss, death always brings in sadness and pain. But it is a reality that all of us will have to face someday. While we grieve at the loss of Norm, we also remember the many blessings that we are thankful for. We are thankful for the gift of his life, for the gift of family. We are thankful for 62 years of married life with Jane. We are thankful for the blessings of children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren. We are thankful for the good times you had with him, the fun and the joy you shared with him. We are thankful for his hard work, dedication, and his great love for the family and the community. We are thankful for the gift of his many friends who touched his life 
and whose lives were touched by him. Norm leaves behind him a beautiful history of his life. I read in the obituary that on February 15, 1958, Norm was married to his high school sweetheart Jane at St. Peter and Paul Catholic Church in Carroll, with the temperature being 13 degrees below zero. And I came to know from Jane that the temperature on the next day was almost 28 degrees below zero. I think Norm was tired of the cold weather that he ordered a warm day for his funeral. <laughs> Probably it is 13 degrees above normal. By the way, Jane told me that she attended her friend's funeral some time back and it was a hot day and the pastor had a long service in the cemetery that she got sunburned. Don't worry, Jane, it's going to be short. <laughs> Norm loved his family and was proud of his family. He loved to spend time with children and grandchildren. He loved spoiling them, attending their many activities. Norm loved to work. He worked several jobs and later on became a farmer. He had a passion for farming. He was also a lover of sports. He was New York Yankees and Green Bay Packers fan. He had several hobbies. His hobbies included golfing, bowling, participating in car shows and playing cards. Just as he loved his family and community, so too he loved God, loved his religion. He was a faithful member of St. Elizabeth Seton Parish. He loved his church. He believed in God, believed in Jesus, and was very faithful to his religious practices. I came to know that Norm and Jane, soon after their marriage, moved into their first Glidden home and eventually bought the house across the street. In 1980, they built a new home. I am sure Jane and children and grandchildren have great memories of all the celebrations they had in their house, such as birthdays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, wedding anniversaries, and so on. We build houses for ourselves, we decorate them, we become settled in life. And yet, despite the fact that we are so settled where we are, Paul says that is still not home. For us, our homeland is in heaven. We might think that we are at home here, but our faith can see beyond the surface of life, and we know that we have an eternal home in heaven. Norm had that vision of faith in his life. God has taken him to the eternal home in heaven to be with him in his presence forever. May he rest in peace. Amen. At this time, I invite his family members or those who would like to say a few words of remembrance about Norm. Norman, on. Yeah. Norman, as the oldest of our Sawyer clan, and me being the youngest, had a spread of 15 years. I got to know my brother when I started babysitting for his kids in the summer. I lived with them all week from end of school to the start of the fall. The ritual was every Monday morning, a shiny car would be seen driving very slowly from the county back blacktop onto the quarter mile gravel road to our house was of course, Norman in the driver's seat. He would not allow any dust or gravel on his car from our road. Having been raised on a dairy farm, I was used to seeing our dad every day in his one and only bib overalls many times covered with grease, the pungent smell of cow, and who knows what else. But for five days, all I saw was Norman in very clean, stylish, and pressed clothes. I thought he must be ready for church all the time. <laughs> His quiet demeanor and gift of listening helped me through several situations growing up. But I pushed my luck one night by staying out late with friends. Knowing where to step to avoid the creeks in the old Wagner house they lived in, I made it to my bedroom. Just then, I heard Norm coming down the steps from upstairs. I literally dove into bed, 
shoes, clothes, and everything, and pretended to be asleep. Suddenly, my door was broke open and the 100 watt ceiling light went on. Through squinted eyes, I saw Norm looking right at me. Yikes, caught in the act, I thought. He then shut off the light, closed the door, and went back upstairs. Nothing was said, but I never did that again. <laughs> Family meant everything to Norm. He would always ask how I was doing and offer his help if needed. He cared deeply about all of us, and in my eyes, he was, and always will be, the perfect model of my oldest brother. Okay, I have a few just notes about Norm. Uh, Rose and I were reminiscing about Norm and what it was like growing up with him. Being the oldest, it was his duty to keep us in line. And one of the ways to do that was to give us a job. I can truthfully say that Norm was our first employee where we actually got wages. <laughs> he was very particular with his clothes. Hence, job number one was to iron his shirts and pants. The crease in the pants had to be sharp as a razor. And if it did not pass inspection, we got to do it again. Wages, one thin dime. We were rich. <laughs> Job number two involved washing his car, which he was just as particular about. You had to be able to see your reflection in the finish or else, yep, you guessed it, we had to do it again. So wages, one dime. Our bank account was growing. His car had glass packed mufflers on it, and we always knew what time he got home, but so did the neighbors. But all kidding aside, growing up, Norm was always like a guardian, taking care and protecting his siblings and his own family now. He was a kind, gentle person and always enjoyed conversations with anyone. We love you, Norm. You are forever in our hearts. Lord Jesus Christ, by your born three days in the tomb, you hallowed the graves of all who believe in you, and so made the grave a sign of hope that promises resurrection even as it claims our mortal bodies. Grant that our brother, Norm, may sleep here in peace until you awaken him to glory. For you are the resurrection and the life. Then he will see you face to face, and in your light will see light, and know the splendor of God, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Because God has chosen to call our brother from this life to himself, we commit his body to the earth, for we are dust, and to dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory, for he is risen, the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our brother Norm to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace him in peace and raise up his body on the last day. Let us now pray in the words of Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God of holiness and power, accept our prayers on behalf of your servant Norm, do not count his deeds against him, for in his heart he desired to do your will. As his faith united him to your people on earth, so may your mercy join him to the angels in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Mother, merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. 
be as this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto Nombo, Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.